Today we're talking about oceans and shorelines. Uh, oceans are salty, but the salinity is not the same everywhere you look. It's places where there's higher evaporation, there's going to be uh, greater salinity. Temperature also varies. Obviously, it's going to be greater temperature near the equator and colder as we get to the poles. Currents are the movement of water throughout the ocean. We see warm water, less salty at the surface, particularly in the tropics. Uh, the global ocean conveyor system is the movement of all the water on the earth, all the salt water on the earth, around the earth, through the different currents. Uh, the one we're most familiar with in this part of the world is the Gulf Stream. It takes warm water out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico, around Florida, and over to warm Europe up. This will get there and cool uh, and descend and come back uh, as the North at water North Atlantic, excuse me, North Atlantic deep water current. Uh, when this runs into Antarctica, it will uh, surface and bring up lots of nutrients for the plankton. Talk to you for a moment about longshore current. Where the currents, here's your longshore current here, come in contact with land, they will refract. refract and turn toward the land okay so you'll notice next time you're on the beach notice that the waves aren't coming generally aren't coming directly in but at an angle of uh, sand will be picked up by this and move this away and gravity will pull it straight back down picked up this way pull straight back down this is how sand moves along the beach this will give us offshore barrier islands uh, such as uh, Ocean City, Assateague on the east coast, uh, and South Padre Island off the coast of Texas. So you get uh, offshore barrier islands you're going to have spits, tombolos, uh, a variety of things uh, by the movement of sand because, due to the longshore current. Another situation you're going to run into are tides. Tides are caused by the moon to a lesser degree the sun. Here's our sun the earth is spinning on its axis and then the moon is going around the earth. When the sun and the earth and the moon are in line, we'll get our highest tides. When they're at 90 degrees to one another, the moon is here or here, we'll get our lowest of high tides, okay? The Bay of Fundy, is a sort of a shape this way it gets narrower as it goes up north so when as the tide comes in it's forced into a narrower and narrower channel and you have some really tremendous tides go to youtube and type in bay of fundy and you'll see some time lapse uh cameras uh, uh, video cameras of this We've already talked about barrier islands, long, narrow, sandy islands that run parallel to, sh to the coast. We'll talk to you a moment about uh, fringing reefs, atolls, and whatnot. You have hot spots come up in the mantle. We've talked about this before when we talked about plate tectonics. And these will start to build a volcano from the bottom of the sea. Here's our surface here. Eventually this will break through the surface. Uh, any uh, coral uh, that are floating around in the water will find if it's warm enough, shallow enough, uh, there's nutrients and it's not full of uh, silt, 
will latch on to the side of one of these islands and start building a reef around it. This we refer to as a fringing reef, fringing reef. Eventually, the plate will take the, the uh, hot spot with it, or correction, not the hot spot, but the plate will take uh, the volcano with it, um, and the island will continue to be worn away every time it rains. We've already talked about weathering, uh, erosion, things of that nature. But the reef is a living thing, and it will continue to grow all around the island. This will give us a barrier reef, barrier reef. Eventually, the island will be worn off below surf the surface of the sea, and nothing's left but the reef. These can be very tall. From the bird's eye view, it looks something like this, and this is referred to as an atoll. Okay. We see a lot of this out in the uh, Pacific. During the last glacial period, the ice age was much lower and at times much higher. Uh, if you go up to Juneau, you can pan for gold right on the beach. Someone eventually found a place where there was a bench where sea level had been higher and found gold here as well. This went up and down during the Pleistocene as much as 400 meters below current sea level. So there's probably other benches out there, uh, but this is the sort of thing you should leave to someone who knows a bit more about what he's doing before you go looking for gold at those depths. Tsunamis. A strong earthquake can create a tsunami or an undersea slide or a, or a landslide into the water. Any large-scale disturbance of the ocean floor, uh, volcanic eruptions, what have you. Waves have a wavelength. The wavelength is measured, say, from crest to crest. This is one wavelength. The wave base, what we call wave base, is one half the wavelength. When the as the bottom of the sea gets less shallow, notice here in this picture, our particle is going around in one, er one area, but the wave is actually moving this way. Once the leading edge of the wave begins to sense the bottom, it'll start to slow down. But the back of the wave is still moving at a higher speed. So it will make the wave shorter front to back and the wave will stand up higher and higher and eventually break. A tsunami will do the same thing, it just breaks much higher and much uh, further inland and is quite dangerous. Another situation I want to talk to you about, if you look at this from the side here, you'll have a reef or, a, or an offshore sandbar. When the wave rises up and comes over it, a great deal of water goes up over it. It's quite a bit higher. As it goes up the beach and starts to come back, the water is going to be lower, and this is going to slow the flow. Uh, and if any, if this is a bird's eye view here, if any low spots in here, the water will come gushing through here. This is referred to as a rip current. These can be quite dangerous. If you're caught in one of these, you can be dragged out to sea a little bit further than you want to go. Do not try to swim back in. You may be big and bad, but you're not going to do that. Turn parallel to it, try to get out of it, and then swim back to the beach. Another thing we want to discuss is coastal straightening. As the water waves come in, it will cut back at this port of the beach and deposit material over here. Uh, you will find, uh, this is where you'll find sea stacks left off. 
you'll find sea caves, sea arches, what have you. This is where the cliff is now, and this is common on the west coast of the United States. This is where the cliff used to be. This has been eaten back to about sea level, okay? This is a wave cut platform right about sea level, and this has all been washed away. It'll cut back into this, cut back into this, and eventually this is going out to sea as well. That concludes our very brief discussion of oceans um, and um, coastlines. I could probably fill up three or four courses uh, discussing this, but I want to get this out here for my students as well as any other students that uh, are needing a brief review. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.